Hi, it's Wayland, and I'll be talking about the tort of negligence in determining whether or not a particular person is liable for negligence. We have to show, or the plaintiff has to show, that the defendant breached the applicable standard of care. So the question that we need to consider is, you know, was the defendant careful enough? Or an even more specific question that a court would look at would be, what would a reasonable person do in similar circumstances? Now, so that begs the question, you know, who is this reasonable person? You know, we don't know who exactly this person is. It's not, it could be male, it could be female. We don't know what their experience or what their upbringing is, but let's, 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 let's find out some clues that courts have given us as to who is the reasonable person. Now, now, to be clear, the reasonable person is not the defendant. We are not asking you know, whether or not the defendant did their best in that particular situation when the accident happened. The, the legal test that we apply here for standard of care is what's called an objective test and not a subjective test. We're not asking subjectively whether or not the actual person you know, did their best in in avoiding or or, or doing their job to avoid uh, the accident. We are asking whether or not a reasonable person uh, would have caused the same accident. Now, in determining what a reasonable person would do in similar circumstances, you know, courts uh, have given us some clues or guidance. So courts have said that a reasonable person takes precautions against foreseeable risks, but not necessarily precautions against every conceivable danger. Another, another clue that we, we have from, from previous court decisions is that a reasonable person considers likely, the likelihood of harm and the potential severity of harm. So a reasonable person would would logically sit down and think, you know, how likely is uh, something wrong uh, going to happen and, and, you know, how severe will be the consequences. And another person, another thing that a reasonable person would do is that a reasonable person would adopt affordable precautions to prevent against mishap or, or accidents or, or injury. So a reasonable person does consider the, the, the cost. So there is a cost-benefit analysis that a reasonable person uh, would, uh, would apply. A reasonable person takes risks in where social utility uh, is involved. So a reasonable person would take greater risk if it involves a, an emergency kind of situation where, uh, it, uh, where the reasonable person is trying to save someone's life, for example. And related to that is also the sudden peril doctrine, which which allows a reasonable person to to make mistakes where uh, where there are difficult circumstances circumstances, especially in an emergency situation. So we so we cut a person more slack in a, an emergency situation. If the person being sued for negligence happens to be a professional, such as a lawyer a doctor, or an accountant, uh, or an engineer, for example, then we, we don't apply the general standard of a reasonable person because a, a reasonable person does not have the, 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 the expertise or training of any of those professionals. So we apply a higher standard to professionals. The, the question that we ask is, what would a reasonably competent and experienced professional do in similar circumstances? So who is this reasonable professional? So this reasonable professional is reasonably competent and reasonably experienced. And if whatever level of expertise is being claimed by, by the professional, if they claim to be a doctor, we hold them to the standard of a reasonable doctor. So even if that, if that person is either exaggerating or just, or just plain lying about being a doctor, if, if that's what they say they are, we hold them to the standard of a reasonably, a reasonably competent and experienced doctor. Now, if, if, a, if a professional holds himself out to be a specialist, so if a doctor says they are a heart specialist or a cardiologist, 
then they are held to that to the higher standard of a reasonably competent and experienced cardiologist, not not the standard of a reasonable sort of general practitioner. If we have an inexperienced professional, let's say a lawyer fresh out of law school, we don't cut that person any slack for being inexperienced. We still hold them to the to the higher standard of being reasonably competent and reasonably experienced. Now professionals are allowed to make errors of judgment and not be held liable for them. So there is a difference between error, an error of judgment, and negligence. An error of judgment is where a reasonable professional in that same situation you know, might have made the same decision. So that would be considered an error of judgment for which there is no, there is no liability under negligence. Now in determining whether someone was reasonably competent and experience in a particular situation, we have to base it on the information that's reasonably available at the time of the accident. It's always easy to look at the information that comes to light after an accident to assess uh, whether or not someone was negligent or not. We, you know, that would be that would be a, an unfair way of assessing negligence. We have to base it on the information that's reasonably available at the time of the accident. If a professional happens to follow approved practice and still the accident happened or someone gets hurt, then usually there's no liability for having followed that standard professional practice. So that standard professional practice could it is often you know set by the by the governing body for a particular profession. As well, sometimes uh, under particular statutes. Uh, there are there are certain requirements that have to be met by a professional. If a professional happens to comply with that statutory standard, that is at least a significant factor in determining that the professional exercised reasonable care and therefore is not uh, is not uh, liable or has not breached the standard of care.